So this is uh, for humanitarian engineering, the financial management for the poor. Uh, this is a very important topic. Um, we we continue or continuing from last week, or I mean Monday, and um, the uh, you got to realize that this this might um, seem like an exercise in 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 class, but it turns out that. Uh, Everybody knows that financial management for the poor is a big issue. Um, so, for instance, uh, the prevalence of microfinance institutions around the world is incredible. Uh, furthermore, if you look at um, Bill Gates has his Gates notes, and uh, if you Google it, take a look. He, he calls this out area out as a as a very important um, uh, developing area for helping people, and in particular. Um, doing so via cell phones, financial ser services on your cell phone. And uh, so, so uh, this is the kind of thing we're working on here. Um, I want to remind you where we were. We talked about this diagram last time. So we have our person here with their savings. We're assuming it's in their pocket. Um, wealth is what comes out. It's, it's, you think of it as the person sensing or just touching and counting the money in their pocket. Um, and then on that far left, they have their desired wealth. They have a notion of their desired wealth. Uh, so the person says, I want $30 in my pocket all the time because I need to be able to take care of a health problem or whatever it might be or some other emergency. <coughs> that signal, that's a signal on the left, that desired wealth. Could change. I mean, the person could come up to the to the thing and say, "Oh, I, now I need forty dollars or fifty dollars because I now I have two kids or whatever." Okay, or the price of healthcare went up, whatever. So this is not necessarily a constant here. It could be a time varying signal, and we'll in fact do that when we do our simulations. Okay. So what the person does is they take um, some notion of desired wealth, they minus off the wealth in their pocket and they have to somehow decide what to do. So we call the signal that's the difference between the two, the error, okay? Now, if that error is positive, that is, desired wealth's up here, and actual wealth is down here, then I take the difference and the number's positive, error is positive. So the spending advisor then has to do what? Well, if, if uh, you want to, if you've got, you want to be up here in wealth and you're down here, you better spend less, right? So they're actually going to lower the amount of spending so that when they're getting their random income, they're going to accumulate some wealth to move their current wealth up to their actual wealth, okay? Correspondingly, if you are up here in wealth and your desired wealth is down there, that means you've got more in your pocket than you need. Therefore, you're gonna raise spending, so you'll bring it down to the desired wealth. So the key is, is regulating about that desired wealth, okay? So that's, that's what we're doing. And I like to remind you that you should be thinking about this as temperature control in a room or cruise control in an automobile, whatever, okay? Those are good analogies, they work. Okay, does everybody have the basic setup? Any questions? Before we get into some details okay so um, here's an implementation of that now um, what I want to do is pick this thing apart for you um, it, it's a lot easier than it looks actually um, so the pocket is just an integrator it's a sum that's that um, K this it's this guy right here now What's different than in the past is on this, it's got this. That just indicates a saturation on linearity. All it says is the sum can't go below zero. Obviously, it can't go below zero. Amount of money in your pocket. Negative money doesn't make sense unless you start talking about loans, blah, blah, blah. So forget it. There's no negative money. So coming out of there on this, on this little arrow is, is uh, the wealth, okay? Uh, don't worry about these outs. Those are just sending data out into the MATLAB workspace. So ignore that. There's a scope right here that um, will 
plot well first day. It's also going to come, see this signal here? Comes clear over to this other side. That's desired wealth. I'll talk about that block in a second. It brings those in. This is called a multiplexer, as I mentioned before. So there's two signals in, one signal out. The scope will have two signals, okay? Desired wealth and actual wealth. And what you want is you want them to be right on top of each other. If they're right on top of each other, then you, what you want to have in your pocket, you've got in your pocket, okay? So that's the objective. Now, let's go to the far left and look at this little, uh, this little contraption here I put together. Um, on the very far left, you see a, a little a line with a, a, a slope going up. It's just a ramp, okay? And then I run that through. This is called a saturator. So chop off the ramp when it gets up to a certain level. You'll see in a minute, what that will do is this. Watch my hand. It's gonna come over, it's gonna come up, and it's gonna cap off, okay? We'll talk about why in just a minute. Now, the rest of the middle there is for a few things. First off, on the top, you see the in random income and the raise block, they add together, and that's the income. Next, this is the PID block. We're gonna be talking about that in a minute. Now, this middle piece, I don't want you to worry about. I can just tell you conceptually what it's doing. Matlab, Simulink's a little irritating at times because if you want to say some simple things, you have to put all kinds of stuff in it. So all this little part does is the following. It says, so this guy's a spending advisor. It comes out and says, I think you should spend this amount of money. And you say, huh, should I spend that amount of money? The first question is, is do I have that much in my pocket? Because that financial advisor may give you bad advice and tell you to spend more than you have in your own pocket. So all that in the middle there is to check, number one, do I have that amount of money in my pocket? If I do have that amount of money in my pocket, I spend, the, spend it. That's this top one. If I don't have that amount of money, then it's a different matter. Okay? I will spend all that I have. Okay? Just all the way to the bottom of my pocket. But unfortunately, I've got to also, this contraption is here to keep track of how much you did spend. In other words, I got to know for both cases, did I, did I reach down in my, how far did I reach down in my pocket? If I reached all, if I wanted to go and spend more than was in my pocket, well then I got to do a different thing to figure out how much I did spend because I spent everything in my pocket. Okay, so it's a little bit of an irritation but don't worry about this middle at all. It's just to take care of that problem. It's just to take care of not going below the bottom of your pocket and only spending what is in your pocket, okay? Now, here's the thing. Do you see this diagram is literally the same as that diagram? I know it's, but you see the pattern. Wealth output, desired wealth, error. This is the PID spending advice, and then there's all that contraption stuff, and here's the bank, and it's there. So that diagram is this diagram, okay? Now, um, what I wanna do is, is um, discuss a few things, and then we're gonna, we're gonna get into the code and run the simulation and play with the simulation, okay? In ways that you might wanna say, well, wait a minute, what if you change that, okay? So let me first um, talk about this PID strategy. I'm only going to do a slide on this. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but I want to let you know that as an engineer, you have the ability to tune this financial advisor, okay? And the way the tuning goes is, is that if you ch there's, there's three gains in this thing, and you can ch tune each of those gains, and they have the effects that I show there. That if I increase one gain, it'll have a faster response. If I increase this interval gain, it'll make sure that I might... Um, desired wealth and actual wealth go to each other and stay there. Uh, this derivative gain has a, the magical property of predicting into the future and then trying to avoid like overshooting, like like if in a automobile control um, cruise control problem, if you were you know trying to move to 55 miles an hour, it makes sure that it doesn't go up to 70 miles an hour, and then back down and go like that. Okay, um, so. You can go and tune these things by hand, or you can do the lazy thing that I often try, and that is, is there's a little button in Simulink. It says auto-tune. You click the button, it auto-tunes it, it comes back, and it fails. No, so often it succeeds. It succeeds. 
once in a while it fails. And if it doesn't succeed the first time, you just try it again. And it, you can, generally it works pretty good, okay? So you don't actually have to know these lower de well, level details because this has been automated. Why in the world would they automate something like this? Because, I, I'm not exaggerating here, millions upon millions of control systems in industry and in your automobiles, etc., are PID control loops. So engineers are doing this stuff all the time. This is the use of an engineering idea in financial management for the poor, okay? Now, let's look at how it performs. This is uh, the top plot. The first time you get it, you're like, what? It, it, one's on top of the other. In other words, the, the red, red is wealth. The person goes up to $100 a day and holds constant. The blue is the desired wealth. They're right on top of each other. It's a little confusing at first. That just shows you how good it's doing. Okay? We'll mess with it a little bit and make it fail just to prove to you that this is really working. Um, notice that in the beginning there, um, for, this, for this poor person, I am not requiring all of a sudden to, for them to have $100 in their pocket. That would kill them, right? Because they'd have to save everything they're making every day for 100 days on average because they're only making an average of a dollar a day. So I adjusted that ramp, and this is taking quite a bit of time. Uh, this is uh, 21,600 uh, days or 60 years. So, you know, that's, uh, it's probably 20 years to get 100 bucks in their pocket, okay? Um, now, this is the error. That means that's the real difference between the red and the blue lines is this plot, okay? And you see, uh, you know, it, there's a few dollar error, okay? They're not, it's not pegging it right on the money. It's not exactly $100. It's, it's, it's plus or minus a few dollars, okay? So it, it's pretty good. And then this is how much money the person's spending. So what I did is in the simulation, and I'll show you where in just a minute, you notice they never spend less than 0.6, 60 cents a day, okay? They're always, and they're spending up to $1.50 a day. Uh, it, it has to be here, what? The average. If I could, somebody tell me this. If I computed the average up to here, and what I spent, is it below, is it below $1 a day I'm spending, or above $1? Is it $1 a day, or is it less? Less, exactly. It's got to be less because they're saving money. Okay? But what's interesting is, is up around here, it can be indeed the case they're averaging a dollar a day. They accumulate, 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 and then they're just tweaking their money around at the top. So what the advisor is doing is it's saying, just think of the complexity of this, this, this uh, controller. So what it's doing is looking at it. Let's say I have a run of good luck. I make $2 a day, $2 a day, $2 a day, $2 a day. So the controller sees this and says, start spending. Okay? Because you got lucky. But if you got unlucky and you, you, you were making $0 a day, $0 a day, it's starting to say to you, you better start saving or you're not going to maintain your desired wealth. And it's continually doing these financial adjustments. Okay? It's actually quite sophisticated what's going on. Okay, now let's show how to degrade it just a little bit. Okay, next step. Now, all I did in this case is change the, some parameters on this bottom plot. What I said is, is um, never allow the person to spend less than 95 cents a day rather than 60 cents. So what happens in this situation is, in the beginning, it does spend less because, well, it doesn't have the money, okay? And then it maintains. Um, but you see, the financial management is not as good, right? I mean, you see the top plot. You can clearly see that the red is deviating from the blue, um, which isn't good in a sense, but it may be acceptable, right? It's off by, what, what's, it, what's it off? Um, a max here of about $15. Um, off of 100, max here of about 15, 16, whatever dollars, off of 100, this little dip, okay? Uh, that's because they, they had a stream of unlucky days, they weren't getting work, they weren't getting money, okay? Um, but overall, you know, it's doing pretty well, okay?
pi. Um, now, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get into, whoops. <coughs> I'm trying to, jeez. Okay, here we go. So here's the, um, I'm in Simulink. I got MATLAB started up here, Simulink, and uh, we're gonna run it some and uh, play around with it a little bit. Uh, I think the first thing I'd like to show you is, is uh, the PID block. Um, here's the gains, the proportional integral and derivative gains. Um, I did not come up with that many significant digits, obviously. I pressed the button, boom, and it came up with these gains, okay? And it just works. Now, what else on the, the second part, this PID advanced, um, what I have here is um, that 0.6 number for the, for the uh, first case that we simulation I showed you. And so what I'm gonna do is just rerun it for that case. Okay, so if you go up here and you click go, um, and you wait a second, and you click it again, because you're impatient. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, it's okay. Uh, pop this guy up. Auto scale. There it is. Okay. So on this, it's the red is the desired wealth. That's this signal right here, right? That's coming from that block on the far left. It's got a ramp coming up and then it saturates it. It's not easy. So, so you see the noise around there? Um, that was our, we talked about that deviation. Um, not much more to say than that. Of course, you can go here and uh, look at, uh, um, if you want, the error. Okay, that's, that's just the plot that I put before, okay? And you can look at um, how much was spent um, per day. Well, there it is. It's a minimum of 0.6. It comes up to about 1.6 or whatever, just like we saw before. Okay, nothing surprising. Now, here's the thing. If you go here, and you can start adjusting anything and see what happens. That's what's fantastic. And what I'll be asking you to do for homework problems, the homework two. So on this diagram, uh, one thing you can do is pop this baby open, go to PID advanced and change this guy to 0 0.95. That was my second run. Go up here, run it again. Run it again. All right. Um, and there you have it. It's not doing as good. Okay. Because you put a constraint on what? Spending too little. You got to spend at least 95 cents a day. So that's making it harder to regulate. So um, it's generally spending more, which means I'm having a hard time. Spending more corresponds to moving the yellow signal down, right? Because that's wealth. Okay, and so it's hard, having a harder time regulating it up. It's you can see on the, the pattern of the plot when the deviations occur, they are occurring in the the down direction. Okay, because it's generally spending more. Okay, and. Another point I want to make is, so, so put that, imprint that on your brain, and let me rerun. Watch what will happen. It's different, right? It's different. Why? Because this is a different person living a different life. They had a different income pattern. So obviously it's going to be different, okay? Um, so that's really, really not surprising. Now, uh, we can, uh, it, 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 these simulations are great because you can easily be really generous. Let's give this guy a raise. We're gonna take him up with a one right there. Now, what that means is, is I am going to give this person a dollar a day consistent every day, plus they're gonna earn a random amount between zero and two. So now they're gonna earn up to $3 and down to $1. I shifted the whole signal up. Does everybody see what I did? So they, they should get wealthier. Now the question you'd ask before you press go, you can either just not think and just compute, right? But it's good to think, well, what's gonna happen? 
I mean, how, how, how do you think it's going to change compared to before now that they're making more money? For instance, is it, is it going to be easier for them to manage their finances in terms of making their actual wealth go to the desired wealth? Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. So let's see if that, that happens. <coughs> well, there you have it. Um, that's compared for the 0.95 case. We gave the guy a raise, so things are looking good. We should look at also the expended per day because what's interesting is look at those numbers. Now, well, <laughs> the guy's spending more, obviously. On average, quite a bit more. We gave him a raise, he's spending more, he's maintaining the money in his pocket for the, for the health problem that he might run into. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody's, uh, you know, putting on a lot of weight on $2 a day, but it's gotten a lot better, right? So it, it behaves as you would expect. Um, so, it's pretty um, easy then, of course, to go back and take away that money. Um, you know what's going to happen if you continue to increase. Things are just going to get better. So the thing is with this diagram is it's pretty easy to it's like do whatever you want. Okay? Um, and there's a few things you can um, simulate. Um, one of those might be, let's say this is uh, the lady of the house and the husband is stealing money from under the bed and going out and drinking. Okay, so let's, we, can we simulate that? Theft from the bank, okay? And the answer is, yeah, we can simulate it. Can somebody, um, how are we gonna go about that? Yes? From the, um, where the, the bank is, you uh, subtract a random amount between like zero exactly. and one. Some amount that would represent how much theft there is. So there's a number of places we can do that here. Um, we, could, we, could, uh, we could do it up here and rather than a raise, just dump this block and put in a, a random minus signal. Okay, that would be a reasonable approach. Uh, so, so why don't we just, um, sorry about my mouse. Grab this guy, pull him up there. Grab that guy, kill him. Grab this guy, copy and paste him. Bring him up here, put him in there. And grab this guy, make it a plus minus now. Okay, so now this that represents theft. This is no longer income. Let's say that uh, the guy rips off uh, 50 cents a day. Um, we'll call this uh, theft per day. Right? Does that seem reasonable? Okay, now, next thing, gosh dang it, you should do is, is ask yourself, what's, that, what's the effect of that? Well, I think you can see the effect of that. I mean, uh, one of the problems you should see, though, also is, is that we don't have the diagram right. What's wrong with the diagram? Yes. I think we should change the theft amount per how much is in the bank. Uh, there's, right. What is there more than taken? So the question is, where is the theft occurring? Is, is, is the person coming home and the person taking the income and then they're stealing from the income that day? Or are they stealing from the bank? Those are two different cases. They're pretty closely related. Let's go with what we have now, okay, just for the for kicks, but let's ask the question. I still would claim there's something wrong here. What is it? Yes? You can't steal income you don't have. Exactly. So if the income that day was zero, I could have, this would take 50 cents off of zero. And Okay, so how do you fix that? Yes. So, gosh. So. Where do we want to do that? Let's take this guy, pull him over here. Uh, let's take this guy um, and pull him over here. Let's uh, um, go up here. Okay, so there, I'm gonna introduce you to some of these uh, things. Um, there's a saturation block, okay? 
So this is a saturation block. I'm going to bring him up there. I'm going to hook him on right there. I'm going to bring this guy over here. Come on. I'm trying to move that guy. All right, I can't move it. Forget it. Saturation, upper limit should be what? Inf, who cares? Lower limit, zero, right? Income could be zero. Okay, so now we got to realize what we're doing, simulating now. What the person is doing is they'll steal up to 50 cents a day if it's available, right? Everybody okay with that? And we can we can now simulate. I always like to think it through. Um, let me go back and check this block. This block, all right, up to 50 cents a day, random between zero and 50 cents. But if I don't have it, I, don't, I can't steal it. Seems good to me. Everybody okay with it? Okay, so let's let's do it. Um, depressing, isn't it? That hurts. So now everything fell apart, okay? Because I'm not getting enough income. There's no way I can maintain my wealth. It just it it completely destroyed the situation, okay? And there's 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 essentially no way to fix it besides assuming up here that I have less theft. So let's go up here and let's say um, rather than um, rather than 50 cents a day, let's say they take a dime and we run it and we look at the output and it's gotten better. Okay, so it, it hurts, but I'm, I'm managing to get this, the, this up there. So the question you, the, the person could ask is, well, how much can I steal and, and still be able to allow my partner to um, maintain their wealth? We're at a nickel now. Mm, it's almost there, okay? So you can see it hurts. I mean, having that, that theft hurts. Now, um, the question you might ask now is, is, okay, well, that's one kind of theft. I bring, the, bring home the bacon and, and, and somebody's taking money from me every day or could be every day. Now, t stealing from the bank is a different matter, right? I mean, it's, it's going to have a slightly different effect, although income you know, goes in the bank or it's spent. So in a certain sense, you would expect that you know, stealing from the bank is going to have a similar effect to stealing from the income stream. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, simulating um, theft from the bank um, as isolated from theft from the income stream, what you would do then normally is you hit this thing, go to. Oh, it's invalid. Um, uh, it doesn't let me set zero zero. All right, fine. Fine, I just got to take it out. Okay, now we're back to normal. That saturation doesn't matter. Uh, how do I simulate theft from the bank? So that's, that's a different case. So this is the bank. I want to pull money out of the bank. Well, there's sort of a there's a there's a couple ways to do it, but the easy way is is right via this die this little block here. You notice that it's summing the income and what's being spent. So all we really have to do is pop this baby open, add another minus sign right here. That's going to add a new port on the input. See the minus sign there now. So the minus sign's there. So all I need to do now is take some money from this guy. So let me go up here, steal this block, copy paste it, bring him down here, okay? This guy now is gonna be our new theft block. 
All right, and let's uh, let's steal from the the bank now. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to. Uh, this is a little tricky. Okay, so this is usually how this goes in Simulink. You, you just ram forward, try to get your your simulation going. So you say, well, I'm gonna steal up to fifty cents a day. Okay, I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna run him up to there. Now. Problem. What's the problem? Just like before, right? Because if I, I can't steal what I don't have. So pulling the money off there is should only be possible if what? If the output here, the wealth output of that block, which is the output of the bank, is above what I want to take. But it's worse than that, isn't it? Because the problem is, is that the person's spending two, right? The person's spending, I've got income coming in, I've got wealth there, so I can't actually do what I'm trying to do there, right? I, I have to consider what money came in today, what I had in the bank, and how much I want to spend. And then, the, then there's this tricky question, Let's say one person is trying to spend the money on food for the kids or whatever, and the other person is trying to steal the money. Well, who wins the battle? And you got to put that in your code, right? You, you literally have... That's the great thing about computer simulations. They force you to consider every little detail. We're not going to do that in class, okay? It's a lot harder to get the bank theft, actually, than it is simulated. Okay. All right. Any questions? I mean, that that that's something you you have to think through. I mean, that's it's, it's not something you do in class. Okay. But there's other interesting. So so let me just kill that. Kill this. Take this guy back to normal by um, making him like that. Okay, we're back to where we were. Next question. Let's go over here to this PID guy. So we're being pretty optimistic because the concept here is that the PID controller is saying, spend this. What if the person is just hungry and says, no, I'm not spending that, I'm spending more money. Can we simulate that? Okay. Now, um, the question is, is where to add this in this diagram? And it's a little tricky because you got to make sure you're adding it in the right place so that you can't be trying to spend money you don't have, for instance. Okay? Um, so in this case, though, we're act this is your homework problem right now we're doing. This case, we're lucky because it's, it's pretty easy to simulate the case of the person not listening to spending advice. Can somebody tell me what to do? Yeah. You may put a if if loop in there for after income if it's below a certain number have them ignored so they skip all of the the decision making. You, did you mean income or did you mean wealth? Uh, income. So like, well, I guess wealth would work too. If you have like a, a low low amount of money in the bank and income, then you would be spending more that day. You're, you're close. Anybody else? Uh, it's a little tricky. It's actually, here's the thing. If, um, think of it this way. Let's say you just simply take the view, I mean, this is the spending advisor. This is the, sorry, this little block should be up here. It should, this is what you, you uh, want to spend or what the advisor is telling you to spend. So let's just play a game. Let's act as though the advisor is telling you to spend more. All of that logic is going to make sure there's money there to spend. So what we're going to do is we're going to break, break this guy right here. Now the thing is, the easiest way to break it is to go like this and pull him up. And then what I have to do is I'm going to grab a uh, um, a sum. So let me just grab this 
this summing block. Bring him. Uh, I'm just going to bring him down here. I'm going to be kind of sloppy, but uh, um, this guy I'm going to bring down and put him in there. That's what it's recommending to spend. Now, what I'm going to actually spend is I'm going to add a uh, a constant. Uh, is there a constant block anywhere? Yeah, right here is a constant. So I'm going to copy paste that guy bring him over here hook him into there make this guy now let's say just keep things simple that every day it comes and says a recommendation it you come back and say i'm spending a dime more 0 0.1 okay and we say okay and then i just simply take this guy and hook him hook it come on Oh, well, fine. You want to go all the way around there? Simulink does things like that. So, uh, uh, now what's it going to do? PID comes out and spends this. You say, okay, I'll take your advice, but I'm going to spend a dime more, and that's it. Okay? Now, let's run this guy and see what happens. Save, run, get this guy. What's it essentially doing? Whoops, I gotta make sure I don't have my, yeah, that's set correctly. Um, that's set correctly. What's it essentially doing? It's, it's like theft from the system. That's the way it's behaving. Because I'm destroying my ability by overspending. I'm destroying my ability to um, regulate my wealth, okay? Um, if if I take this guy up, or I mean, I take I take this guy down from 0.1 to 05. Say okay, and I run him again. I come here, I come here, and it starts to work. Okay. So indeed, if if you this financial advisor will fall to pieces if the advice isn't taken. And the reason for that fundamentally is is that the this person's living close to the edge. I mean, they're they're very poor. I mean, they're down near zero, and <coughs> therefore, if if uh, they're not following the advice, um, there it's quite likely they will not indeed be able to um, keep their actual wealth at their desired wealth. So, you so from a perspective here, you, you'd say uh, this is sort of studying. Um, there's different ways to look at it. it. It's studying if I had a PID controller operating for, as a financial advisor and it, what the financial advice wasn't followed, how bad would it get? It's like an engineering evaluation of that. Yes? What's the difference between uh, the summation block you just put in and just increasing the control spending by 10 cents? What do you mean the control spending? The feedback on how much I should spend a day. That is the number right there that we're adjusting. Th this number coming out of the PID block is the number that it's saying to spend. I might not remember the PID block. Does it have like a limit? Does it have a maximum spending? It, it has a maximum spending that's very high at $15 a day. So it's, it doesn't hit it. It has a lower spending limit of 95 cents a day. So, uh, um, the, the, the simulation gives you the possibility of, uh, of adjusting a number of things. Um, in particular, um, you could look at um, theft of income. You can look at not following the spending advice. You can look at giving a raise uh, to the person, um, and so on. But... The bottom line, I want you to now synthesize what we've done today in, in the last class period. And there's, there's, really, there's really one principle that matters here. As show, this comes out real clear. And it says that the person's going to suffer no matter what, unfortunately. Because if they want to save, the only way, if they want to have a desired wealth, money in their pocket, they're going to have to save. And if they're going to save, they're going to take it out of what they're eating. Okay? 
that's a really, really basic issue, okay? And uh, um, these simulations show it really clearly. I mean, uh, uh, you look at it and you're like, oh my goodness, there's no, there's no way around the basic problem, essentially. Now, what is nice though is, is boy, you, you want to get happy is just give this guy a little raise and everything changes. It reminds me very much of the movie um, with Chris and Zach and Living on One Dollar because you know, we got a random income going on and they say partial solutions matter. If we move these people up to $2 a day, it makes a huge difference in their lives. Boy, these simulations show that because you know, once you give them a raise, everything comes up and they're not hitting that bottom. They're not going hungry for days. They're not, I mean, it makes a huge difference, okay? Um, and it's amazing that such a, really this is a very simple simulation when it comes right down to it, but this shows it, okay? Um, and it's consistent with uh, the literature. Um, my uh, st graduate student, um, Hugo um, Gonzalez, is um, doing his research on extending all of this, okay? Um, and uh, trying to improve on the situation. This is sort of the first thing you would try. Well, not the first, but you know, it's not a, a very advanced um, system, okay? Any questions before I go to the next step? Okay, so uh, what I want to talk about now is some practical things. So there's two ways to view that financial advisor. You could say, well, why don't we just teach these people how to do finance management for themselves? Let's teach them to be that feedback control. Let's teach them to be the controller. Now, I, I'll, I'll let you read in the book, but my claim would be that no human being could do what that PID controller is doing. For one, it would require you to keep a sum of all income you've had over your entire life. It's doing that inside. For two, you've got to compute derivatives. You, it's got to be able to compute these slopes. Now, it might be able to do that once in a while, but that would be hard. And you got to do the proportional term and you got to sum it all together. I, no human, I think, can do that. I think that's impossible. So in a certain sense, it's highly unrealistic. It's highly unrealistic for me to say, oh, well, a poor person, why don't you use PID control? That, that's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. Okay? I couldn't do it. I couldn't, so I couldn't expect them to be able to do it. Um, but fortunately, there's another possibility, and that is, what if you took the algorithm for this and put it on a smartphone. You say, poor people don't have smartphones. Well, hell, that's changing real fast. But remember, over 6 billion people have cell phone subscription in the world. Now, this algorithm is, from an algorithmic perspective, on a phone, is quite simple, actually. It is, this is not a difficult algorithm. Much more complex algorithms exist on existing phones. So it's very technologically feasible to do this. Put it on a cell phone. So then what happens is you pop your cell phone open, you put in your, uh, your desired wealth, you put in your daily income, you put in your, it comes back and it does a little computation, it comes back and says, hey, spend this, okay? <coughs> Let's say they take the advice. Great, you, you start going day after day after day. Let's say they don't take the advice. Well, as an engineer, you can simulate what will happen if they don't take the advice, right? And you can design the algorithm to help, it, help them recover and so on and so forth. Um, Ugo said to me, though, when, last year when I first taught this, he said, well, wait a minute. I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but microfinance institutions are all over the world, uh, like in Guatemala. You saw the one in Guatemala with the, the Mayan lady sitting in front of it, etc. Look, I mean, why not just have a centralized computer there running this algorithm once a week, not once a day? So it runs it, and a person comes in, they say, well, I made this much this week, um, here's what I'd like to have in my pocket, and what, and it, it crunches numbers, comes back and says, you can spend this much. Take the advice, take it or leave it. And they go off and they come back the next week and you keep going like that. That's a very reasonable thing to do, okay? Because they might have to go there anyway because of, you remember when they had, the, the ladies there were required when they got a loan to open a savings account, I mean, they, they try to get them hooked into the whole to help better help them better manage their finances, okay? Um, so 
for me, what's interesting about this process is, is that you sit down, you try to model human decision making with finances. You end up with a dynamical system, nonlinear dynamical system, stochastic nonlinear dynamical system, and you figure out how to control it, how to, how to um, do finances management. So by studying the way a human would do things, you're led to automating it. Well, that's a standard theme in engineering. Just think, uh, well, what is technology for? Technology is defined as extending human capability. So most technologies um, in the end do what? They eliminate jobs. And yet they create jobs, right? They eliminate jobs because I buy a bunch of robots and fire all the um, line workers in, in the plant, right? And that's what happens. But then we have to hire a whole bunch of people to keep the robots going. So it sort of ups the ante. So, so this is, in a sense, a, a financial advisor to try to help people um, get out of poverty. And it's about automating a task that's very complicated. Well, the poor are, are highly, under highly stressed situations just trying to survive. Taking a, a, this cognitive load off of them sort of makes sense. Okay? And it's a, it's a pretty heavy cognitive load. Like I said, I, I couldn't do what this financial advisor is doing um, myself. Um, so I think it's a, it's pretty reasonable to try to do something like that. Of course, you can start thinking about the implications with respect to the cloud. You could start thinking, I mean, because I mean, once you're in a cell phone net, you're hooked up to the cloud. Um, do you hear that? I heard this just two weeks ago. So guess what? Somebody figured out how to um, take a standard cell phone, not a smartphone, and hook it up to the internet. The internet. What they did is they built on top of text messages an internet pro protocol and interface the internet. Why not? Right? So, so there's a lot of different possibilities here. And that includes, if you're going into the cloud, that includes interfacing to a bank. That includes all kinds of things like getting a loan then to help the system out, um, having somebody take a penny off a day and save it, and all kinds of things, right? As, once you're in the cloud, you really start getting capability. So, so uh, I think it's it, some of these financial services present um, some real um, opportunities um, to help. Okay, any questions? Okay, we're done for the day. I'm finishing.